Today on Network Freaking Marketing Radio, we have Miss Jennifer Denizard, Season 2 Play to Win contestant. Are you tired of the old ways of trying to recruit friends and family to your MLM? Tactics just don't work anymore. Have you wanted to quit and say the heck with this? But something still gives you that burning desire to rock this business? All you needed was the way. This is Network Freaking Marketing Radio. Jennifer, good morning. Happy birthday and welcome to Network Freaking Marketing Radio. How are you? Good, thank you. Good morning. Tell me about it. Would you ever have thought when we were sitting in that mansion out there in Na- well, Naples or wherever the heck we were? Um, <laughs> Secret location. Yeah, I, I, I know somewhere in Naples. I, I don't think any of us could actually find where they took us on those buses <laughs> trying to get back there. But um, that the world would be where it is today. We're about 50 days outside of filming and it's completely different. And Absolutely. What is your take on it? I mean, how are you doing? The elephant in the room, you know, we've been opening every show for the last two weeks about talking about uh, demagogue fever here. So I'm a full-time nurse, so I'm still very busy. Um, it's good for me to get outside the house because I would go stir crazy inside. So I feel for the people that are having to do it. Um, a lot of people are appreciative of what I do, but I actually need to do it. It's just who I am. Um, and then since then, I'm just working my network marketing business in pockets of time that I do have, which is not very much right now, but like my lunch breaks an hour before bed, um, it's very minimal right now, but it's working. So nursing, what type of nurse are you? So I've always done ICU nursing. And the last two years, I've changed over to primary care nursing. So right now, I'm actually in a call center. And I'm triaging people left to right. Um, I talk to probably 75 people a day in wow. 10 hours. Wow. Um just to see if they need testing and go from there. You know, whether you're frontline or inside a call room, we commend everyone out there in the medical profession. Um, thank you for what you're doing because I don't think anybody ever thought that our medical system or our infrastructure could be pushed to the limit that it is right now. But the, the, the cool th- there is a, there, I've, I've been saying this, there is a cool outcome from what we've been learning from Corona. The medical, uh, business, brick and mortar, it's going to change. It's going to be to where I don't have to get out or take, you know, I, pediatricians and stuff, maybe the kid, you know, until they get the technology to where you can actually hear things or lungs. And I'm probably, they, they probably have it, but are you seeing medicine probably change forever and how we handle patients finally getting with technology a little bit? Absolutely. We started when social isolation, when social isolation began, we started, doing telemed visits to keep people out of the office so that we didn't get them um, exposure to any other illnesses. Um, And then we started bringing um, healthy people in in the morning because obviously the cleaning company was there overnight. And then we started bringing um, the people that were feeling sick already with symptoms in in the afternoon. And then it switched to full-time telemed visits. Slowly, we just had doctors trickling out of the office to go help elsewhere where COVID was extremely rampant already. Mm -hmm. Um, And our resources were spread thin and we all got deployed elsewhere. So there's one doctor that does telemed visits in the office and one nurse left back there. And it's crazy that a whole clinic could close um, with over more than 40 doctors in one clinic um, down to one. And now I think that going back when that the clinics reopen, they will keep telemed visits to keep healthy people um, with minor concerns that don't require diagnostic testing um, out of the office. And I think it's going to be very interesting. I think it, it before our eyes it has forever changed. Do, do you do you enjoy it? I mean, there's there's that miss of being with the patient. Do, do you how how do you handle it? I mean, you can talk by video, of course. But how do you, as a nurse? I mean, a big part of it. My sister's a nurse, and she says they haven't gone that full extreme yet. She's still in the little primary care office. 
So I miss being with my patients. I miss teaching. Um, we're just doing it a little bit differently right now, but I feel like it is allowing us to give our patients a little bit more care than we were just because they're so sick. They need one-on-one -on -one attention and we have been, um, you know, helping out or deployed to other areas. So like we're helping, there are some nurses that are helping the main nurses in that area, kind of passing things along. People are gloved and gowned and we don't have enough equipment for them to unglove and gown and get medication or go run and grab an ice pack um, and just do different things like that. So the deployed nurses are kind of being, you know, helping in that way. And it allows the nurses to be um, at the bedside, dedicated to the patient and really just giving them the care that they deserve and they need. I feel like we were spreading our resources very thin. Um, it was a lot of times about budget and where we could have people. And this is kind of a different view. I mean, some people will disagree with me, I'm sure, but it okay. is nice to kind of have a reason to reevaluate things and kind of restructure things and look at what the bigger picture is. It's almost like it took something like this to realize the importance of what there's, we're doing. There's so much industry that's going to reshape that's going to learn because they had to learn overnight essentially i mean and the speed at which a lot of these companies transitioned it's amazing even even you see it in the network marketing industry there were several companies that were prepared for online strategy but there was a lot that we just talked about uh, we had david ariga on the other day and we were talking about how so many companies had compliance to where you couldn't do certain things on the net which was archaic in 2020 yeah. You know, absolutely to where you can't make a Facebook post. I'm like, it's the most basic form of marketing today. Now they have to, if they want to survive. So let's talk about this. You were a contestant on season two, Play to Win. How did yes. that come about? So quite honestly, um, I had not been working my network marketing business. Um, I got into it for different reasons um, than most, and I was not prospected. I loved the products. I kind of fell into them. Um, my friend, um, Emily Kurtovich, was on season one, and I literally watched her transformation and her coming into her own this year. And I was kind of like, you know, feeling a little bit lost and looking for direction. And she really inspired me. And so after talking to her for a little bit and trying to figure out like what my path was, um, I joined Rank Makers with Ray Higdon last August. And when the opportunity came about, um, or actually it was actually before that, um, I went to Rank Makers Live in October. So I had been with them um, in Rank Makers for, from August to October. I went in October. I gained a lot of value from the presentations and the people that were there, um, created great relationships. And he announced that he'd be casting for season two. And as soon as he said that, I literally said to myself, I will be on that show. Awesome. And then the timing came about for the casting videos and I was a little bit nervous. I got in my head and I was kind of like, Oh man, like just all the thoughts, all the thoughts. <laughs> but I sat down, I created my video, I submitted it. And then shortly thereafter, I got the email saying you've been accepted into the reality show. And I was so excited because to me that meant transformation and positive things down the line. So that's really the way that I looked at it. You know, the, I've said this to a lot of people, the value, very few people get to go through, a lot of people can go get coaching. Okay. You can pay a couple thousand bucks and have your little phone calls and all this stuff, but to go through a fully immersion experience, um, five to seven days, it is, it's a little crazy, <laughs> you know, the, the emotional swings and stuff and the stuff. And you, what's, what's even more, was more amazing to me that I saw was the pattern that everyone has a lot of shit that they have to go through. You know, we all, Absolutely. Are, we all, and you know, sometimes you think, Oh, poor me, poor me, poor me. But a lot of times you look at it and you're like, man, mine is nothing compared to, 
and the the power i mean some of the ladies that were on that show what they've gone through and stuff i mean you can attest too it's like it's it's so uplifting to see what people can prevail through and how different each person's area is you know did you, did you have that same experience kind of like i did or yeah i felt like i've been practicing gratitude for a long time just due to things that um, I've been through in my life mm -hmm. and I feel like it only got stronger when I joined rank makers. It's just a practice that they did. And I took it one step further with doing the wealth Wednesday, which has felt amazing. Um, but it is quite incredible because we all know that we have a story and the story is what's been leading our way. And when you get together with a group of people such as we did, um, you're not focused on your story. And I was blown away by what other people have been through. And some of them, you know, looked at our stories, like, you know, how did you get through that? And so I think we all had a huge amount of empathy for each other, but the bonds and the family that we have now amongst each other is quite incredible. And we've all helped each other overcome um, and just continue to grow. And it's an amazing group of people. It was totally worth getting vulnerable for um, and going through the experience. Do you feel you growed quite a bit through it? I do feel like I've grown in more aspects than one. I feel like I've brought it home into family. I feel like I've um, brought it home and taught my son lessons from it. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I've even brought it to work um, from explaining just simple um, Wealth Wednesday tactics and sharing that with other people um, all the way down to, um, you know, being vulnerable with my story and sharing it with um other nurses and even some patients because especially during um, this time patients are so anxious and you know I had a family tell me like you know my dad's days are numbered and now I have to be in quarantine and how do I deal with that you know because he's in hospice and so for me me, um, I was able to be vulnerable through the experience that I went through and really just put that out there. We don't always share our own stuff with patients, but I'm like, I can empathize with you. I feel your pain. And this is the plan that we're going to come up with for you. And this is how we can best help you. Um, and I don't think I always shared my story um, it's a big or part was of it. open. You know, they say uh, it's a very big part of it, crafting your story. And it's going to take, at least I've personally seen, it's like, it's taken turns like the way i want to approach it and talk to people and tell them hey and even like network freaking marketing we kind of like sat back last week and we said what is our real goal here why are we doing this and what are we trying to accomplish and right. it's, it's interesting to where you know your story probably even after rank makers like we sat down and said what's the goal of the show so we we finally came up with the the theory of what we want is we want to help 500 people make 300 bucks a month and if you hit that goal, we know you have at least a solid foundation within the industry to build off of. Absolutely. It, it's so hard. You know, so many people can get into network marketing for such a cheap a value, but they don't appreciate the, it will give back 2000% if you give it 50% is what I've always kind of joked with people. As you know, we were talking uh, pre-show about you've gone through some pretty heavy things, you know loss of some pretty big family members and stuff like that. We're not going to dive too deep into it, but do you find that the culture is there and like the family of people better than almost your best friends? Absolutely. I think um, with fellow contestants, if that's what you're speaking to, I feel like yeah, we've let's become... Let's talk about your, your, your general, your network that you have, your culture that oh, you've yeah. built outside of rank makers. Absolutely. I feel like um, I've had a lot of supportive people in my life. Um, people showed up at the most vulnerable times that I didn't expect. And I actually said that to a friend this morning, you know, she showed up when it counted and um, I'll never forget that. And she's one of the people that time can go by and you just pick up where you left off. And those are the most valuable relationships. Um, and oftentimes it's, it's those kind of friends. Um, you know, that they have a lot going on, you know, they're busy, they live far away, but they actually show up, not just, to support you but like in person and i experienced that um and that was incredible amazing like you have people we all have a group of friends that we've known for years but then it's amazing a business that you started 
turns into friendships that are real. You know, we all have acquaintances stuff like that, and the people that, that are actually there, not to sell you anything, but really to see you succeed or go through an emotional time. The culture within the industry is so powerful that it's 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 a building process that so many don't even realize. It's one of the best takeaways from the industry, you know. So let's talk about how is your business doing today after the show? How, did you get fired up? Did you start hitting it? I mean, not only were you thrown the largest curveball in humanity. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot Absolutely. of people are saying that boy, now's the time to hit it hard. And you know, if you hit it hard, it is going to reap and so a benefit like no other. What's your take on it? So I would, I would agree with that. I think um, there was a lot to process when I came home, but I needed to just come up with a plan and decide mm -hmm. um, where I wanted things to go exactly when I got home. Um, so it is a process, but um, I developed, I devised that plan. And like I said, um, for some personal reasons, I did not work my business probably for about 18 months. Um, and that, that was due to um, the loss of my husband. I initially started my business as a distraction, something I could throw my whole self into with products that I really loved. Um, and then some depression came about and life circumstances. And what I learned through all of that is that every time I get knocked down, I get back up. And I decided that the family that I created and the relationships that I created, even though I wasn't actively working my business for 18 months, those are the people that were there for me and that did show up and that did help me through some of that depression. And I realized that I was, you know, lacking some things and still using products that I loved. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to try to make this work. And I jumped back in and people were super supportive and I devised my own plan of how I was going to do that and working it in these small pockets that I have right now. And, um, I really did need to rebuild my team. So I've started to do that and I'm excited. So it's going well. You know, they say the pros that we've talked to like Ray Higdon, Fraser Brooks, Scott Aaron, I'm, they're all top their game trainers. And, you know, probably the top 3% within the industry we've had on the last couple of weeks. And I don't think there's one of them that you could talk to that hasn't blown up a team before. You know, it's just part of the growth. And I think the biggest thing is, is when you can, can create a culture is when you can create the synergy that it takes and you'll weed out the leaders versus the time wasters. And, I think right now it's going to be really interesting to see what happens here in about around July when we talk to a lot of people and say, Hey, where did your business go? Yeah. You had an influx of sales, but how many people are really hitting it hard now and getting it? Because there's so many without work. Would we lose a million jobs last week? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, exactly. There's going to be 13 million people unemployed in the United States alone. I know. Scary and number. people are, look yeah, absolutely. And people are looking like not only, you know, is the government providing, you know, stimulus checks, but that's not going to last that's people nothing. very long. Yeah, what um, is three grand or $2,000 or whatever. That's nothing. Exactly. And when you're showing people the opportunity um, of a low startup cost or some of these companies, now or even having no startup costs because they see that people need the help and so the incentive if you can start your own business and have those leadership qualities or have people that support you um in being you know a leader and developing those qualities there's nothing that you can't do and people have this great opportunity and i think that they will cap choose to capitalize it on it or they won't and there's no reason not to try uh, it is and i think I, most companies right now have made it easier for people to get in. Um, Absolutely. What would it cost you right now if you were to put someone in your business? What would be the starting pack, package price to get them loaded? Zero. Zero dollars. Really? Wow. Now, they still have to buy something, right? So the way that my company is structured, mm -hmm. you, you don't. You get up to a certain percentage off of um, – they don't, so they're Product. not requiring any front load purchase at all right now. So somebody could get started with you. Someone could yep. go out and pick Jennifer Denizard right now and be like, hey, we're going to put you in business. 
not only put you in business, but I'm going to guarantee you, you're going to make $4,000 next year, whether you sell a thing or not. I'll show you how to take it off on your taxes. It's that easy. Absolutely. And that's, that's exactly awesome. what I've said to people, the tax it's, benefits. That, it's such a no brainer because we're, we got free enrollment right now, but you still have to buy. I won't put anybody in for free as a, I, I believe in you have to have that exchange of a dollar. So to get started with us right now, I think we're 80, the lowest I could probably put somebody in is around 89 bucks, maybe to 115. And then an on, what is your ongoing per month? Is it about a hundred, 115 bucks? So you, so every six months you have to have like a hundred um, personal volume. And so to me, that's nothing because if you find products that you love, wow. you're going to buy them. And even for myself, I don't love auto ship because sometimes I end up getting it and getting it. And it. Yeah, I, I just yesterday I went on there and changed what the heck we had coming. I'm like, what do you need this month? <laughs> I'm like, yep. I like exactly. a couple of products we take and she likes a couple, especially right now with the vitamin stuff that we do. But yeah. uh, it's, it's, but no, you don't, you don't have to do auto ship. It's within every six months you need to buy so much. But the reason why they're successful is because the products speak for themselves and yep. people love them. So That's you awesome. end up doing it on your own and you're making money at the same time. And plus coming from being a nurse, um, you've got a little bit of the clinical background side to be able to help people in many facets. I, most of the companies have a couple of different products that go down different vertical markets. But being a nurse, it's got to be a huge helper being able to say, hey, well, let's back up. Let me ask this. Is your practice open to alternative therapies that you work for? Yes. Okay. So, so it is interesting to see because a lot of doctors are. Like I have a pediatrician on my team that kills it, you know. And it's interesting to see some of the docs. Sometimes it's good to have a doctor and sometimes it's really bad because he just gets bombarded yeah. when we do like a home meeting or something like that. But it is what it is. Um, are but you I think it's, really, Go it's, it's good because um, I think for me, there's a lot of things that people don't know about me and that I don't always, you know, advertise per se. So I actually have seven medical aesthetic certifications. So, oh, wow. so, you know, the products because I do um, skincare and makeup like would be really good for a dermatologist, um, other, you know, um, like plastic surgeons and other aesthetic nurses that want, you know, high quality skincare um, and people that want makeup that have skincare in it. So it's, it's the industry it's, across the board is going to get. Uh, and there's so, you know, what's amazing what we've been finding, there's so many good products out there and there's a lot of good companies. And whether you're coming into the industry or not, you got to find what you emulate with. And the team that you, I, I, I urge anybody out there listening to, if you're looking to getting into network marketing, do your research, talk to a couple of leaders and see if you gel with them. Because if you don't, yeah, it sucks. I mean, I've been on teams to where it's just like, holy hell, I'm like, get me out of here. <laughs> it definitely makes a difference. I think you need to find products that you love because in the end, that's what I did. And I never stopped using them. And mm -hmm. that, that's what drove me back to my business. But I also think um, the leadership and, and finding out what they do and um, their style is huge. Because if you don't have that, you're not going to have, um, like you said, the culture. And that's truly what makes a difference in your, um, in your business. You can do it on your own, but it's really a lot more work than is necessary. Yeah. How many people do you think you personally right now, this is an interesting question we're starting to ask people. How many people do you try to prospect per day and how many do you really do? Let's be real. Okay. So I've upped my numbers. Um, so I want to do, 100 to 125 a day but right now i'm averaging 75 so you're doing 75 cold reach outs per week 50 to 70 oh <laughs> 50 to 75 in the pockets of time that i have each day wow that's so way to go girl i mean that's that's crushing it thank you Are so you that's starting to reap the financial reward yet from all the hard work I am. Um, 
I mean, 75, I, I can tell you, I don't hit 75 a week. No way. I don't have to, you know, I, I, we have different things we're doing that we, we right. work on. I mean, it's a different strategy, but right. man, killing. I think it's, so that's why I'm not reaching a hundred and 150 because I am not doing this full time. I mean, for 10 hours a day, um, for two, Mom, five nurse, days a week yeah. right now, I'm working. So um, I'm pretty proud of that. It is taking me a little bit, but like you said, with what you're doing today, and they tell you this all the time, you reap the benefits in 90 days. So I'm amping up now and awesome. then it's going to eventually, you know, pick up overall. I mean, this is such a cool story that we could put out right here. There's nobody out there that can come to us right now and says, I don't have the time. You're a single mom. You have, you're working probably 40, 60 hours a week in a crisis. Mom duties alone take a full-time gig. And you're still reaching out to hell, five, 300, 300 minimum a week, 500 people and growing your business. Yeah. Way to go. I mean, that is crushing it. You should be like happy dancing around the house because yeah. it's those kind of numbers and that type of stuff right there. And you still have time. You're, you're taking 20 minutes out of your day to talk on network freaking marketing radio, you know, yeah. you know, way to go. You I'm have very, to want it. You have to want it. So because true. Listen. It is so true. If you want it, those who want it will accomplish it. Those who just kind of like, I don't know. We could use all, all sorts of those that want to just throw it into the wind. Go ahead. You can touch the water, but unless you dive in, you're not going to understand you know, I got into I got into a mode like during part of those eighteen months where I thought I was in business. I thought I was reaching out to people. I got stuck in learning mode, and mm -hmm. I literally was doing what we call busy work. You think you're doing stuff, but so you're really work. not. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, this show made me realize like you really need to get focused again. It it's it's a blunt slap in the face sometimes. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. All right, so we have a segment called The Gauntlet. What it is is a series of rapid-fire questions, so we can wrap this up. I appreciate it. Happy birthday again. Thank you. And, you know, it was awesome, you know. And uh, we're going to go through this. Me. Yeah, oh, we, we love it, you know, just talk to people. and Because we get so many different walks, and, you know, that's the whole strategy of what we do here is to really crack into the industry and seeing where everybody's going, how it's working, and what's your best mode, you know. All right. I do ready? want to tell people, yeah, go ahead. find stuff you love, even if you're not, um, you know, in network marketing, support mm -hmm. your local small businesses. Um, this makes oh. a difference in people's lives. And honestly, I have bought from right about now, like three quarters of the people that we were on the show with. It's family. And I love the different products. Like you have to find one that works for you that you want to be in business with. But that doesn't mean that I haven't found... 10 or 15 products that I love. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out there and they can hit so That's many different true. All right, you ready for this? I think so. All right, car or truck? Car. Are you a morning or a night person? Morning, hands down. Beer or wine? Wine. Who plays you in the movie of you? Oh, geez. Melissa McCarthy. Three words that describe you now. Um empathetic traveler and spontaneous iphone or android iphone who do you idle um oh man that's a tough one there's there's many people first one comes to mind my dad awesome beach or mountain beach favorite color orange Baseball or football? Football. First song that pops in your head right now? It's My Life, Bon Jovi. Cool. One thing that you miss since the start of the virus? Travel. Awesome. Quite honestly, Wanderlust sets my soul on fire. <laughs> Jennifer, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Uh, is there a website that doesn't have a company name in it that we can push people to or anything like that? Or no, but my personal profile um, on Facebook is public. Okay. Um, so without saying company names, just look for me there. Send me it's a private Jennifer message. Jennifer Denizard, D-E-N-I-Z-A-R-D. 
and she will hook you up. Make sure you tell me you found it on Network Freaking Marketing. Guys, if you like what you're listening to, don't forget we have a five-day master pack that gives away valuable content from Eric Worre, Ray Higdon, Sandra Lynn Druzy, and many, many others. So, And Fraser Brooks is on there now as well. So we have a really good five-day master pack that we give away at networkfreakingmarketing.com. Hey guys, it's Ryan here from Network Freaking Marketing Radio. If you like what we're doing, head over to iTunes and give us a like. Also, don't forget to grab your five-day master pack at www.networkfreakingmarketing.com.